All right, by popular demand, we have the legendary Cyber Dragon deck that did well, made top 16 out of our extravaganza this past weekend. Now, keep in mind that Virtual World was a dominant force at every other extravaganza around the world, all right? A lot of the European ones were pretty much overran by Virtual World, but something interesting happened at the United States one for NA here. I blinked and there was only one Virtual World in Top Cut. We had way more Rogue. Uh, one person, of course, had to comment and be like, well, there's just a bunch of no-names in the event. Of course Rogue topped. You, you don't have to try to discredit the whole event because we're trying to push for a more diverse metagame. Uh, you, you do what you want, but I guess it's your opinion. So, one of the decks that found its way up into Top Cup was Cyber Dragon with a little bit of a, a, a spice. Uh, and, and it has access to the Verte machine. Now, the Verte machine spits out the Dragoon, giving you the additional negate. Uh, you're also going to get to make those Cyber Dragon boards that you're going to typically make, which means you're basically going to be aiming for second. You can go first with this deck relatively easily. You should have no problem on either mode. Um, it's really just up in the air for what you want to do, though. So Emmanuel Lilly did very, very nice with this, and I'm very happy to say with a smile on my face, you go, Cyber Dragons. I'm so happy for you, as I'm sure everybody else watching this is. Good job. All right. The rest of the community is excited for this. So we have only two copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. I guess after watching the Subterror uh, deck profile yesterday, where's the straight one of one of one of in the hand traps, um, you go for diversity, I guess, at this point. You can't always find optimal room for hand traps. Two, two feels fine here. We have triple copies of Cyber Dragon. Look, it breaks boards. We also have triple copies of Cyber Dragon Core. On normal sum, you get to add that spell or trap card from your deck to your hand. This card, this card is the bane of my existence. All right, and then you can banish it from the graveyard to splash summon a Cyber Dragon um, when you meet the conditions. Outside of that, it just tutors for your stuff. Oh, <laughs> did I mention that it's got 400 attack points so you can machine dupe the crap out of this thing? Uh-huh. Triple copies of Hertz uh, on special summon. You can make this card's level become five till the end of the turn, so it's easier to make your uh, big, bad, cool Nova Dragon. And then if it's into the graveyard, you get to recur back a Cyber Dragon monster. Only one copy of Naxter. Naxter has definitely kind of lost a little bit of his steam. This card's name becomes Cyber Dragon while in the graveyard. You can discard one of the cards to splash some of this card from your hand. If this card is no more splash summon, you target a machine monster in your graveyard with 2100 attack or defense and splash summon it. And you gotta splash summon for the rest of this turn except for machine monsters. So be careful with what you're doing. Um, some stuff does lock you. Uh, just really depends on the place that you're making though, what extenders you have to burn where. We have two copies of Effect Veiler. Um, this is going to be our other hand trap. And then we have two copies of Galaxy Soldier. Discarding the light, searching for another copy of itself so that you can special summon and continue on. Uh, one copy of the Jizakuru, um, the Kaiju we can search. Uh, one Nibiru. Actually, this is interesting. Um, one Space Rock in the main deck. So, judging by how this works, uh, it'll be easier, I guess, for you to play around certain situations. Also, only playing one isn't necessarily detrimental to your strategy. If you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. All right. We also have triple copies of Gamma. And then we have three bricks of one Dark Magician, one Driver, and one Red Eyes. And I can imagine playing this deck must have been a little bit frustrating, especially if you open up all three of these. But you probably got lucky throughout the day and just didn't see these. Must be nice. We also have triple copies of Cyber Emergency, our standard searcher. One repair plant for additional searching. Rev system for the reborn. One feather duster for back row. Triple copies of essentially our win con. You plop this on the table, you're smiling. We have one overload fusion and one red eyes fusion. Traps, we have the best card in our deck, the blow up everything card. Triple copies of Infinite Permanence, and then one red reboot, actually. Um, this is actually a really good counter pick right now. Uh, the format started to head more towards a uh, trap-heavy environment. So this will kind of give you the ability to blow your opponent out and continue on with the game. 
Actually, the fact that this was main decked is really strong. We have one Owl Mirage, one Verte, one Link Spider, one Cyber Dragon Seeger, two Nova, two Gobbies of Infinity, one Pleiades, one Draco Berserker of the Tenny, one Rise Dark Dragoon, one Macaba, one Rampage, one Mega Fleet, and one Fortress Dragon. Side deck here we have two Lancia, one Pankertops, two Gobbies of Draw and Lockbird, two Ghost Bell, one Nibiru, two Cosmic Cyclone, one Dark Ruler No More, one Twin Twister, one Evenly Matched, and two copies of Summon Limit. Wrapping up this relatively interesting concoction, um, like I said, this deck is the master of getting two monsters on the field. Um, being able to make the Infinity and the Zeger, being able to make the Verte also, so you can make the Dragoon to snap, oh, where'd your field go, buddy? All right, it, it actually is a very well-rounded strategy, and I'm very happy to see that this did top. So while you do have the large amount of bricks in here, uh, this duel did find success. So congratulations, Emmanuel. Next up, we have... Ah, I felt really bad for this one. This build got 17th place. He bubbled, all right, out of top 16. Um, I do want to say congratulations to the young Phantom Knight PK player here. Um, well, I mean, yeah, this is just basically Phantom Knights. We only have one graph in here. All right, so, well, oh yeah, we also have the one Seer. <laughs> Man, what's your Burning Abyss deck do? It play two BA monsters. All right, so we have triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. One copy of Seer, one copy of the Jackalope, one copy of the Suchinoko. We also have the triple copies of the Draw and Lockbird in the main, which means we were ahead for the stupid bad matchup. Oh my gosh. Seeing this makes me extremely happy. Drytrons just get destroyed by this card. We have one Graph. We have two copies of Kage Musha Knight. Hey, Extender. Two copies of Psychic Wielder. Hey, Extender. Hey, look, two copies of Ancient Cloak for our combo. Two copies of the Ragged Gloves, triple copies of the Silent Boots, one copy of the Stained Greaves, triple copies of the Torn Scales, triple copies of Tour Guide, and then we have some spicy stuff here. Book of Moon. We have two in here. Now, Book is pretty much um, seeing a little bit more play over time as just the ability to stop your opponent's core normal summon. I've been noticing a lot as of late that stopping that opponent's main normal summon um, just, just getting it out of the way really just puts you in a better position right now. Uh, one for ones are really good right now. Also, being able to book your opponent's normal summon zoo monster just puts you in such a good position. We have triple copies of Droplet, and then we have one Phantom Knight's Rank Up Magic Force. During your main phase, banish one or more dark monsters from your graveyard and then target one dark exceed you control. Special summon from your extra deck, one Phantom Knights, Raid Raptor, or one Xyz Dragon Exceed monster whose rank equals that of the targeted monster you control, plus the number of monsters banished by using his material for the rest of his turn. After this card resolves, you not summon Exceed monsters from your extra deck. Or yeah, you just make Exceeds. All right, and then of course your material is going to transfer. And by the way, this is a quick play. I, I don't know how many of you guys kind of caught that, but this card's good. We have one Rota, two Talents, with triple fog blade and one copy of wings, no shade brigandine in this. Extra deck, we have one rusty tin can, one unicorn, one phoenix, one cherubini with one access code, two copies of the Phantom Knights of Breaksword, one Raider's Knight, one bamboozling gossip shadow, one copy of Lavier with one copy of Zeus. We actually can hard make, well, we have a couple options. We have Requiem to step through the Dark Rebellion, or we can make the Arc Rebellion. It depends on which one of these that you want to make, uh, depending on the situation you've got yourself in, uh, but either one of these will be able to handle the situation. We have one Coral Dragon. Side deck here, we have two Cycle Reader, triple copies of Lancia, one Bad Bar, one copy of Panker Tops, two Twin Twister, two Anti-Spell, two D-Barrier, and two copies of Evenly Matched. Wrapping up well, two very special deck profiles out of this chunk of information from this weekend. So uh, what do you guys think about all this stuff? A very, very interesting course of events, I do think. So guys, please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think about these decks. And I'll see your beautiful faces later on in the day. Peace out, guys. Thank you, patrons, for making the ride never truly end without you guys' support. Well, 
I would probably be doing Trouble Shuffle videos for a living. Guys, please check out Vanquil 40 for all of your card fight Vanguard content brought to you by Mcol 40 And if you are looking to pick up singles, check out mcolgames.com for your trading card game needs. Thanks for watching, everybody.